I do, I do believe that. I think you could teach a master class on midlife women's health. And I think that is something we don't know we need until we're there. Yes, and midlife women's health starts at the age of 40, ladies who are listening in today. <laughs> 40 until death do us part. That's a big group. It is a big group. Well, talk a little bit about it because you get so many questions. And, and I, I did do a post after I turned 50 and it was my big, like, oh my gosh, uh, scary moment, right? And you kind of laughed about that because you said, oh, well, welcome to the club. But um, I did... I did find a lot of information, I think, about aging that was interesting to me, and I really want to do it the right way, and um, I want to be smart about it, and then I want to share that with other people that have had so many questions, and I find it kind of inspiring. So what what is it that people need to know uh, if they're in their 40s, in their 50s, to make sure that they go through this the right way and the healthy way? Well, first of all, women need to know that it's normal. It begins in our 40s, and there's a term for it called perimenopause. And not unsurprisingly, you're not going to get a lecture at your obstetrician's office who's focused on this younger group of women having babies. So here comes a big teaching moment for everyone. You really do need to find someone who is focused on midlife women's health, on perimenopause, which then is the journey into menopause and menopause is when our ovaries retire and i do love to tell women who tell me i'm all done with that menopause <laughs> you're not all done with that menopause it simply means your ovaries have retired we should thank them for their service they work very hard <laughs> and now we're going to live life as women without the work of our ovaries and our ovaries make estrogen progesterone testosterone right. We're going to spend one third of our lives without those hormones. That's what menopause is. So here's what's interesting. So I, I went in a little early. I had I had my own share of health problems. And um, I had uh, my mom died of breast cancer when I was young. So they've watched me and monitored me for a very, very long time for everything um, when it comes to women's health. And so I've been very fortunate there. Um, but, you know, I had a real hard time. I tried to I can't believe I'm just going to say it on camera. I tried to go on um, hormone replacement and it was very difficult. My body kind of rejected it. And mm -hmm. so now I'm going through it without that and trying to figure out the way right around it. And um, I assume you have people where that happens and they have to figure it out uh, without going through hormone replacement, even though some people are very successful with it. Well, this is a great big topic. Should I or shouldn't I consider hormone therapy? Right. Who's, the group, who's the group that can consider it safely? Who do we have to feel more concerned about? But I want your listeners and viewers to be so very clear. Menopause, again, is when our ovaries stop making hormones. The first thing you better be doing is maximizing your lifestyle choices. It's a wake up call to you because what you're going to face now are significant health issues. Everyone's concerned about breast cancer, but for some reason, no one's concerned about heart disease, the number one killer of women or osteoporosis, which is a major epidemic, especially once we stop making our own estrogen. So what all of your listeners and viewers can do is start eating more healthily, quit smoking if you're smoking, exercise, and that's daily. And if you're symptomatic, if you're having hot flashes and night sweats and a whole host of symptoms, you can consider hormone therapy once you find that healthcare professional who knows what they're doing to help really guide you based on your own personal risks and medical history and family history. There is not a one size fits all here. Well, let's talk about that because a lot of us have had gynos for forever, for decades, right? But you said to me, we just before we, we jumped on to talk about this, uh, that that's really not probably gonna be your answer going forward and you might need to do a little uh, doctor shopping and look around and see uh, who's going to fit your lifestyle where you are right now. I always find it's women are so surprised. Why doesn't my obstetrician know this? Why doesn't my obstetrician tell me any of this? Why didn't I get the talk? I like to call it the what to expect when you're not expecting talk. Right, 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 right. right. Very menopause talk. Who's supposed to give me the talk? Well, it's not going to be your obstetrician. They're very, very busy delivering babies. It's really going to be someone who wants to give you the talk, who's passionate or credentialed in midlife women's health. It's not a big homework assignment to do. Everybody can go to their list on their insurance plan, look up gynecologist only, 
Right. And then start a little search for which ones really focus on this particular issue. I also wanted your listeners and viewers to know a great uh, resource, which is the North American Menopause Society. It's menopause.org. Just head right over there while you're surfing around the interweb and get on that site. They'll help you find a healthcare professional in your neck of the woods who's actually credentialed. So you've been talking about it for a long time. And I said, how come no one talks about this? And you said, everyone's talking about it. You just, you just haven't had to, which I thought was really funny. You're right. Like I didn't realize it. I'm like, what, what, who's talking about it? But it still is kind of a, ta not taboo. I don't, I don't know what the right word is. Not comfortable topic. You know, I, I don't think I would go into, you know, go into the office and be like, Hey everybody. Oh, how was your week? And, oh, I'm in menopause. What? You, you wouldn't do that. You, you would say I had the flu or you would say, you know, I'm you know, dealing with whatever a broken arm, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't talk about this like that. It's like, it's an uncomfortable topic for some people. Well, so many women will talk quietly to each yeah. other in the corner, Yeah, <laughs> but you're not feeling comfortable making a big announcement that you're sweaty and flashy and you have no sex drive and you're gaining weight and you're irritable and you have no patience for this or for that. So that is really, women have to be, we have to be told what it is. Why do we feel so lousy? Right. What can we do about it? And we also need to, by the way, educate the men in our lives because sure. when they have a little of information, they can be a tiny bit more helpful than they are now. Yeah, well, absolutely. And you know, um, you talk a lot about it in your book, obviously, Menopause Confidential, but you talk about the a little bit of everything. And then, you know, I uh, I was reading the book and then you told me about your, your documentary. And I think at one point there was like a hot flash party and another, t you know, you really uh, make it less, uh, ominous <laughs> and scary, but you said your reaction to it, which I thought was interesting is like you immediately got phone calls from all over the country of people wanting, wanting to have somebody to talk to about it. Yeah. You're referring to let's talk menopause on PBS. Mm -hmm. And we put together a show which includes experts in the field and real women. It happens to be not only educational and evidence-based, but it's also very funny. It <laughs> I is. It's like, it made, it made it okay. Yeah, it really is. I embrace that. Obviously, I love this field. I could talk about this all day. In fact, I do talk about it all day. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and, I, uh, and that's what I want. I want all of your listeners, all of your viewers, any woman who ever sees us ever talking about this topic to say, you know, it's okay. I want to talk about it too. I don't want to feel badly about this or I'm not really sure about that and we're or embarrassed about it or feeling right. like it's all over you know I um the I, th I think that it's important to me I've been a cheerleader of women for a very very long time and I was in the relationship space for for a while uh and I um I want to be that woman encourager and now that I'm in this you know this next chapter I I feel like it's more important than ever that we do that for each other wherever we're coming from you know I come from the journalism you know you are coming from the medical field but I, I think that it's so important for other people to know that we're all going through the same thing because um, uh, I, I think that's the only way we get through it when we have somebody else's story and say you know it's, it's gonna be okay and that's what we're all kind of looking for right now you know, you, you mentioned that you turned 50 recently and I want to cheerlead you through the 50s or it's just the beginning of when I, I threw myself a disco dance party when I turned 50. <laughs> you did? I couldn't I shouted from the rooftops. I am 50. I was so psyched about it. And I want all of your listeners and all of your viewers and any midlife woman who's struggling to know you will get to the other side. If at first you don't succeed with your strategy, you'll try and try again. There is a strategy to help you with your symptoms or issues or whatever you need. Well, now I'm just swallowing a whole bunch of maca powder. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, okay. So one other thing, you know, there, there was a lot of research done um, about the ha kind of the happiness curve. And then after the age of the 50, people start getting happier. But if you look at the list of symptoms with menopause, it's hot flashes, night sweats, you know, not being able to stay asleep, moodiness, weight gain, none of those feel like part of the happiness curve. So can you um, encourage that yeah. part? For, yeah, for in, in, increased happiness is not on the list of symptoms. <laughs> <under menopause. laughs> 
You don't have increased happiness. And in fact, so many, so many women will experience you know, mood changes, anxiety, panic attacks that they never had before, um, more angry outbursts and impatience with the people that you love and the people that you don't love. So mood changes is a very important component, especially of that perimenopausal journey in our 40s off to menopause in our late 40s and 50s. But by the way, it will all start with our one step at a time. It will start with putting ourselves on the list of things to do, protecting sleep, protecting healthy lifestyle choices. You have to start there. But I always do say, but if you feel so darn lousy and unhappy, how are you going to do those things? You don't want to do them. It's true. So that, again, there's a little journey here. It's a process but you will get to the other side if you partner with the right people to help you. If you get the right information from trusted scientific sources, then you will have a much better shot at maintaining your health and wellness from now all the way until then. When you say protecting sleep, uh, explain what that means. Being serious about it. You have every single day of the week, every night, seven days a week, 365 days a year, you have to treat every day the same way. You have to take off all of the stimulating electronic equipment. You have to put your phone far away. You really do have to shut out the world and become so vigilant and protective of your sleep habits. Otherwise, you will not get a good night's sleep. It's not easier to get a good night's sleep as you age. It's harder to. So you have to do everything in your power to protect good sleep habits. And you all know what they are. You're just not doing it. I know. You know what's so funny? Last night I had um, Netflix on and the TV is there blaring. And then I went, I just I don't know why I can't fall asleep. And it's, you're just lying to yourself. You know, I know exactly why I can't fall asleep. There is a television blaring at me, you know, and then the covers come on and off and on and off. And I was like, oh, I can't because I'm, I'm having a hot flash. That's not why. It was because I had your honor on television, <laughs> watching whatever I was watching. And uh, you're, you're right. I mean, it really is about that. And I, I guess, uh, you know, we have to really be honest with ourselves about it. If, um, you know, you have so many secrets for thriving through midlife, um, what do you think the most important thing is or your most asked question by your uh, audience and people that have read your book or um, or seen the documentary or just heard about you and, and gone to your website? What's the most asked question? Well, uh, in my book, Menopause Confidential, I think I, I've covered everything, as you mentioned, from head to toe, yeah. from hair to toenail, right? So they're, they're, they're all the most asked questions, but I think I might bring it down to one, which is all women want to know, Will I feel like myself again? Mm -hmm. Will I feel well? Yeah. Will I, you know, will this end of what I'm experiencing? Because I feel so terrible. So the short answer, and everybody obviously has a different journey and different issues and different concerns and different this and different that. But the short answer is yes, you will feel like yourself again. 